Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This time I'm going to show you how to build a third person environment, also known as a game, and replace the default mannequin character with your metahuman. And we're going to be doing it in Unreal Engine 5.1. If you are running Unreal Engine 5.0.3, be sure to check out my other video in the description, which shows how to do it for that engine. This video is specifically for Unreal Engine 5.1. Let's get started. Now, if you haven't watched my other video, you still might want to, which will show you where you can create a metahuman and explain some of the differences between the metahumans. But in this case, I'll assume you even watched that video or don't feel the need to. I'm gonna make a third person environment. So I've selected games and I've chosen third person and I've kept all the default settings here on the right with the exception of, I will call this metahuman51 underscore tutorial and click on create. Once this environment is created, it will use the standard default template, which looks like a little arena with some geometry in it. Not very much. If you want to create a blank level, you certainly can, but I'm going to use this one as an example. So right now, if I click on play, you'll notice that my character is the default mannequin and I can move that person around. But now I want to show you how to replace this with your metahuman. And the way to do that is I'm going to hit escape and come out of the simulator is I'm going to go up to Quixel Bridge. And I've certainly shown how to do this in my other videos, but let's see what the process looks like. Once I have Quixel Bridge open, make sure you are logged in. If you aren't, you need to go up to the top right. And then once you're logged in, you'll notice there's a folder called my metahumans. The metahuman that I'm going to bring in is my Eric character and it's version three. So I will come here, choose medium quality and notice that I have already downloaded. So I don't need to go through the downloader update process because I've made no changes right now to my character. If this is a new process to you, again, maybe watch my other videos, but I'm just going to simply add it to the project. And that's a very quick process once it's already generated and downloaded. Now, when it comes in, you're going to get some messages about missing plugins. Just click enable, enable and enable. And if you get this prompt to restart, you can go ahead and do that. I sometimes like to wait until all the shaders are done compiling, but there's certainly no reason why I can't just hit restart now. Now we are restarted and the shaders are coming in. I'm going to go and take my metahuman by going to the metahumans folder and find Eric. And here's Eric. And if you'll notice when I try to drag Eric into the environment, nothing really looks like it's happening. I have to wait a second. And then that's when all the shaders for that particular character will start coming in and just be patient while that happens. And you'll also notice that the blueprint is updated with Eric's character. Now, what I do want to recommend that you do is right click and make a duplicate and just call this underscore backup. So the original name with an underscore backup, and that's just in case anything goes wrong in the process. Now that I've done that, let me double click and go through the settings. Now I have shown how to do this in my other video, so I'm gonna move through this fairly quickly. If you want a slower version of this, feel free to watch my other video. First thing you wanna do is go up to class settings right here at the top and change the actor class, which is the parent class's actor, to a third person character. And you can just search for that by typing BP and you'll see the BP third person character. Go ahead and choose that and that will change some of the blueprint components. Go down to the live link area and activate right here on the right, your iPhone. Now you're only gonna see your iPhone here if your iPhone has live link running and if you are not familiar how to do that, I have another video on my channel that walks you through that process. Next, go down to the AR kit face right here and over on the right, use AR kit and activate that. And these are the settings that are needed in order to activate motion capture for your metahuman. I'm now opening up the live retarget and I wanna choose this first one, use live retarget mode, and I wanna activate that over here. 
All right, now I want you to go up to the viewport up here in the top menu, and you'll see that your MetaHuman and the default mannequin are not quite in the right rotation. So come on over to your left and take this root right here and drag that up to the mesh. And now it should look like mesh and then root and that body, and that's organizing all the components in the right order. Now with your root selected, Notice you can see my head and face moving because I've activated the motion capture. Come over to your right once you've selected root and hit the little reset arrow to put it in the right position. And it should look like this if you've been following along. I'm going to click on save. The next thing you want to do is select the mesh. And once you select the mesh, make sure mesh is selected. Come over here to the top and type VIS for visible. And where it says rendering visible, uncheck that. And that's going to hide the third person mannequin. Now I want to point out that if you are a professional game developer, you might want a different workflow. You, you should have a different workflow. And that is not using a replacement of the mannequin, but actually building an entire third person uh, blueprint from scratch. But for someone like myself that is VTubing or those of you that are looking to create animations, this is a very quick and dirty way to replace the mannequin with a third person character and it works quite well. Last thing for you to do over here on the right under visibility is change this from always tick pose to the first setting always tick pose and refresh bones. And with that done, click on compile and click on save. Now at this point, I'm going to close the window and I'm going to show you that if I click on play, we still see the third person mannequin and they are running around. So there's one last step that you need to do to just get rid of the mannequin. And that is hit the escape key, go down to third person, open up the blueprints folder, and then click on this blueprint right here, which is the third person game mode. And now that you have changed the actor type or the parent class from actor to third person character, your metahuman will show up here. And what you're doing right here is basically saying when the player spawns to use this model. And what did we do? We replaced the mannequin with our metahuman in the model. So now when I click on play, there is my metahuman. Now, if I push, W, A, S, and D, all of my movement keys, nothing is working. And that is one of the changes about version 5.1 from my other video on how to do this in version 5.0.3 of the Unreal Engine. So there's another step that we need to do. And come to the third person character. Double click on the third person character and where it says add input mapping, this box, draw a box around everything with a box drawn around this, hold your mouse off one of the nodes and right click and choose copy. Okay, if you draw a box around this area and try to right click in the comment area, you're gonna get this pop up and that's not what you want. So make sure you draw a box around the whole thing, find a node, hover over it, right click and choose copy. Then close this window and go back over to the MetaHumans folder and open up your MetaHuman and then inside this area, type control V on your keyboard to paste in the blueprint. Now what we want to do once this is pasted in is this little custom event right here, choose it and hit the backspace on your keyboard to get rid of it. Then draw a connector from the hair LOD setup over to the cast to player controller. And if you wanna widen your comment box, you certainly can do that and drop all these items inside. You can come down to this right here and delete it by hitting the backspace. And now you should be left with these two setups. Click on compile and then click on save. And now for the last step, and the reason that we're taking this last step is you'll notice that if I place my actor, if you notice how my head is moving, that's from a placed actor. But if I click on play, you'll notice that the mouth 
and head are not moving in the third player character, although if I walk over here, you'll notice they are working with the placed actor. So how do we fix that? Hit escape if you are running in the simulator, open up your metahuman blueprint, and then come over to the left and select face. Once you have face selected, over on the right, you'll see this skeletal mesh asset. Just double click on the head, and that will open up this window. In this window, go up to the top right. It looks like a little org chart, and it's the face animation blueprint. Click on that, and you'll now be brought to this screen. Inside this screen are the following steps. Up in the top right, you'll notice it says live link face subject, and it says iPhone black. I bet that's one of the developer's iPhones that they forgot to change the setting, but what you need to do is drop it down and choose your iPhone. And if you notice now my face is actually moving. Now, if you don't see your iPhone down here, it's because you're not running live link on your phone or have set it up correctly. So be sure to watch my other video if you don't know how to do that. The last thing you need to do is right here where it says live link face head is activate that. And now the head is moving as well. Click on compile and click on save and close the window. And now when I click play, I can move my character as well as have the facial animation working. Well, that's it for now, guys. I know that workflow works. It's a little bit of a hack, but I know that so many of you wanted to get this working in version 5.1. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. If you enjoyed any part of this video or learned something, drop a like if you would. And hey, don't forget, you can always subscribe to the channel. It's greatly appreciated, and I love hearing from you guys. If I learn anything new, I'll be sure to pass it on to you. But also don't forget to join our Discord channel. That's a great way to interact with the other members of the Eric VTuber community.